All right, I think we are live on Facebook. So hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yes, I see us on Facebook. Hey, you guys. Hey, y'all come on in. I'm about to start the room on Clubhouse. Give me just a moment. Hello, hello. Hey guys, I see y'all sharing. I see you coming on in. Hello, hey y'all. Hello, hello. We are also on Clubhouse. So give me a second as I ping some people in the room. Hey y'all, how y'all doing? I see that you guys are sharing. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Are y'all ready for this conversation on tonight? <laughs> okay. I have my, um, okay, here we go. All right, I have my girls here. Hey, you guys, welcome, 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 welcome to our, um, hey, y'all, hey, okay, yep, I see it's live. Okay, wait a minute, it's live on my personal page, not my personal page, but my business page too. Okay, then. Okay, wait a minute, it's live on my Okay, then, um, <laughs> we just gonna roll with it. Hey, y'all. Hey, how y'all hey. doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the um, mentoring chat. I am Sharissa T, visionary of HR Ministries, and I am so excited that you guys decided to pop in this room on tonight to, um, talk with us and come in um, and, and get what God is going to give out on this evening. <laughs> um, I have two beautiful queens here, two beautiful queens, and they are going to introduce themselves and they are going to tell you a little bit about them. And then we're going to get into this conversation because I do believe that this is going to be a jam packed hour. I do believe that this is going to be a jam-packed jam hour. So I want you guys to come on in. Hey, listen, y'all are on Clubhouse. Hey, Kavita. Hey, Lashana. Welcome to HR Ministries. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all on Clubhouse and Facebook Live. Thank y'all so much for joining. Listen, I am excited. I'm going to toss it over to whoever wants to come next and share um, who they are, what they do and toss the baton to the next person. <laughs> Good evening, y'all. I am Joey. Um, I am Joey Gresham, and I am the owner of Joey Iman. I'm a life coach and therapist serving women and moms. Hey, y'all. I'm Tanya Williams, and I am a speaker, a transformational life coach. I'm also an, an author, and I also have a, a business called Covered Girls Coaching and Services, LLC, where I help young women that's just starting their business learn how to brand um, about opening up their LLC, or um, I also teach them how to do build business credit and just business marketing and branding 101. That's what's up. Y'all see these business owners in the building. Hey, y'all, these y'all are joining Clubhouse. Hey, thank you so much. Um, oh, I don't want to mess up your name. Is it Cormentia? Cormenta, thank you so much for joining. Hey, y'all, we are so super excited um, for you guys to be here. Listen, if you are on Clubhouse, go ahead and hit that share button, get some people, ping some people in the room. And if you're on Facebook Live, I dare you too to go ahead and hit that share button and get some people in the room, man, as we dive in the topic of mentorship mentorship. I am excited to be able to come with this conversation yet again. We teamed up um, not even a year ago, was it? It wasn't a year ago, probably about maybe eight months, 
six to eight months ago, and we had the same conversation um, about mentorship and um, had a great conversation. And so I know um, they were asking for us to bring it back. And so we are here for part two. And I don't know how God is going to move or what is going to be um said on tonight but I do believe that you guys are in the room or on the live for a reason and so again we thank you for joining um so if y'all ready if you guys are ready go ahead and put ready in the chat I am listening and looking um put ready in the chat if you all are ready for this word on tonight I believe it's going to be a blessing to you I got some amazing I have some amazing women um on here tonight who are um going to be just dropping gems I already know how this is going to go hey Eva I see you hello thank you so much for joining if y'all ready go ahead and let me know in the comments that you guys are ready for this conversation I I want to start if y'all don't mind y'all ladies y'all ready y'all ready Okay, here we go. I want to start with um, two verses of scriptures, and then I'm going to toss it off because really it's a conversation. This is no um, rhyme or reason. We're just talking tonight. We're just um, really just having a conversation around the topic of mentorship. But I want to put two verses in your hearing because this is what God um, laid on my heart as I was um just kind of preparing for today. Um, he laid on my mind, Ruth 1, um, verse 15 through 18. I want to read that. And I also am going to read 2 Kings 2, um, verses 1 through 2 in the message version. So this is Ruth 1, verses 15 through 18. It says, then Naomi, look at your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Turn back and follow your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do the same to me as he has done for you. And more also, if anything but death separates me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. That was Ruth 1 verses 15 through 18 in the Amplified Version. And I want to also read this in your hearing, 2 Kings 2 verses one through two, and this is the message version. And it says, just before God took Elijah to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on a walk to, out to Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God has sent me on an errand to Bethel. Elijah said, not on your life. I'm not letting you out of my sight. So they both went to Bethel. I read though, I read those two because the theme that I'm hearing is that the mentee knew who the mentor was and wanted to stay with that mentor. They knew that that person had wisdom or something that they were supposed to get from them. And as we start this conversation, I, I, I wanted to put these verses out there because how many times um, we, as we're all what coaches, business owners, um, we, you know, we are ministers, we do all these things, but how many times do we find that person who we really just need to stay and glean with? And when I think about mentorship, that's what I think about. I think about you finding that person or you connecting with that person who you just cannot let get out of your sight. You guys have to pair up. You guys have to talk. You guys have to um, have that camaraderie and that friendship because there is something that they have that you need. So I want to, to start there. When I think about mentorship, I'm thinking it's about that friendship, that partnership, someone who you cannot let go of, someone who you want to follow. It's a person 
that um, has that guidance, that wisdom, or that light, sort of, or, or sort of speak. Um, that person who has um, they have that glow about them, or it's just something about them, and you have to stick with them no matter what. And even if they try to let you go, because you think about the verses, right? Even if they try to let you go, you like, wait, hold on, uh uh, we ain't done yet. Hold up, come on back, roll on back around. I I'm not finished yet, you know. And so, ladies, I want to just toss it off to you, man. Um, as I was, um, as you were listening to those verses that I, um, um, read what stuck out to you and um what does it mean for you when you think about mentorship whoever wants to go first I think we mentioned this on the last live that we did that a lot of times it's not us finding them it's them finding us and you know anytime I coach within the first conversation I can tell if they're really serious you know you have some people who are really serious and want to set goals and to move forward and then you have some that really just want to see okay what's this life coach all about you know and so I always try to use discernment and there has been times when you know I've prayed about it and you know the conversation has gone on to where you know um, how often should I do this and you know um, I really need it but I don't have the money and God will put it on my heart that they're my assignment and, you know, um, we're, we're all in the business to make money, but for me, it's ministry. And so, you know, when God speaks to me and says, well, they're your assignment, then, you know, at that point, I have to kind of let the business side go. And I, if I know that they are, um, he sent them to me because, you know, I can help them. Then a lot of times then, you know, I have to just say, okay, well, you know, I'm here as long as you need me. And, you know, but I also let them know that, Hey, you know, my overall goal is not for you to need me more than, you know, three to six months. My goal is for you to take these tools so you can do it yourself. But it's not just them learning something from me. A lot of times during that process, like God is growing me or, you know, I'm also learning something because I said yes to um, the assignment. The thing that comes to mind, um, and it's just really simple, it is just choosing to be committed just choosing to be committed, um, you know, with any relationship, it's a choice, it's a choice. And um, a lot of times we get our signals um, mixed and crossed and we are not on the path that we're supposed to, or the connection is not going in the direction that it's intended to go. Um, and so it's just having that clarity of where you are, where you want to be. Um, and, and knowing, as Tanya mentioned, that having that dis discernment um, on both ends of, of what this is and what it should be, and just choosing, um, making the choice to be committed. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You guys said so much. One thing I want to piggyback on, Tanya talked about um, the assignment and allowing them to say, hey, I don't want, I want you to really get these tools and utilize it, not just stick around for three to six months and, you know, not implementing what, um, <laughs> you know, what we're, we're asking or saying that you should do. So there's a trust factor there. Like you have to trust that mentor and know that that mentor either sees something in you or sees a route that you should take. And you have to be able to trust what they're saying and do what they're telling you to do. It's not like um, a lot of us, you know, and you said the assignment, which, oh my goodness, I could talk about that all day. But um, many people reach out to us and want coaching, but then there is joy, that commitment piece. It's like, why would you take this time to wait, you know, spend your money if you're not going to implement the strategies that we're putting in place for you, or you're not going to, you know, do the work. Like you have, as a mentee, you have to do the work. And I want to say this as well, because I feel my, 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 um, in my spirit, a lot of us who are coaching and telling you, you say this all 
the time, a coach needs a coach. You as a coach who does things for others need someone pushing and prepping you um, on the backside so that you're continuing to grow and you're continuing to sharpen the saw and do what you need to do to be your best self for those people who God sends you along, a aka the assignment. <laughs> the assignment how many times have we um and you don't really have to say you're a so-called coach but God places people around us who we are to help encourage and go to the next level that's the assignment and how many times are we resisting it or we're fighting against it because maybe that person is a difficult person or maybe that person is just like not utilizing the strategies that you know you have given them how many people have we lost so coach or no coach title how many people have we lost because we are just stressed out to the max maybe because of things that we either have going on or their outcome or what they're doing you know um we're all on you know we all have people who God sends our way to help that's what we're here to do. We're supposed to pull each other up. Iron sharpens iron. I say that all the time. So you have to be mindful about the people who are around you so you can continue to pull them up because that's what you're supposed to do. But how many times have we dropped the ball? If we can really be honest, um, how many times are we letting people slide or letting people go? How many times are we, you know, we're not holding people accountable? You don't have to be a coach though. You, you hold your friends accountable. Hey girl, you don't need, sis, you don't need to do that. You know, that's not, that's not right. I see you, I see your mic on Tanya. I see you guys, y'all see it, I see it. I hit something. How many times are we just not being accountable to, um, you know, holding people accountable to the things that they say they were gonna do? And sometimes what I wanted to say is sometimes, um, you know, our assignment may be that difficult person you know, that person that you find yourself week after week, giving them the same advice, giving them the same instructions, but they never take your advice. Then they go back and they make the same mistakes and they come back to you again, you know? And I have found myself sometimes with that cutoff spirit, like, okay, look, how many times have we done this? You know, I'm doing this as a service to you, whether it's paid or unpaid, I've done this in friendships and at some point, you know, it's draining. And like you said, every coach needs a coach. But sometimes even when you have a coach, it's still draining. And, you know, so sometimes we have to look at it from a point of, okay, um, why does this person keep coming back to me? There's a reason why they keep coming back to me. Um, and sometimes I think it's um, a growth thing. You know, we sometimes forget when we get to a level and we have matured spiritually, you know, or whatever, we forget where we came from. And it's so easy for us to think, um, you know, how patient Jesus was with us or how patient, you know, how we, we really forget, you know, and it, it's easy for us to throw in the towel to them, but it's obviously if they keep coming back, there's an assignment there, not just for them, but for us. And you never know, it may help you down the road in your business with dealing with a difficult client. And if you can't handle this friend, you know, that's difficult and not taking your advice, how are you going to handle that difficult client on a really bad day when you've had it up to here and you know, you're on your last limb for the day. So are we going to act out of our emotions and cut them off and lose a client or potentially whoever follows them as well? So an another thing that stuck out as I'm listening to both of you is um, fear. And um, I've, I've made posts on Facebook um, about this, but 2022 was, is truly, it is truly a season um, of faith for me and embracing uncertainty. And when I think of mentorship uh, and when I'm list, as I'm listening to you two, that's the thing that comes up, cho choosing to be committed, um, wrestling with fear versus um, walking in faith. And, um, you know, we, we sometimes when we're dealing with that from the mentee, we have to nurture that in them um, to help them to become a little bit more fearless. 
Um, and that will, our, our mentorship in that capacity will help propel them to where they need to be and, and decrease that resistance that exists um, that is, is likely due to um, them being in a, in a season of uncertainty and struggling with fear um, instead of walking in faith. Um, it, it takes a lot when we talk about when we talk about the trust factor, um, trust on both ends, coach versus mentee or mentee versus mentor, it takes trust. And we, you know, a, a lot of times we don't know these people. They don't know us and we don't know them. And as Tanya mentioned, we're just placed in this position by God to serve as, as to serve in this capacity um, and to uh, nurture this assignment that we've been given. And so we have to do the inner work in ourselves as well as nurture the deficits that exist um, and the barriers that exist um, within that other individual. That's so good. That's so good. She said we have to nurture ourselves. We have to get ourselves together, right? Um, we have to be our best selves for those people who God has sent our way. That means uh, what I'm thinking in mind, taking care of self, self-care, um, having that accountability partner, being in the presence of God, staying pray, you know, in prayer, in worship, doing things that we have to do so that we are absolutely that vessel um, to be that coach, to be that mentor um, um, for that particular person. Because we never know, like you said, we don't know everybody. We don't know who God, even if we do this, probably still something that we probably don't know. <laughs> and it may be revealed as we um, connect on that level, but we just don't know what people, everybody is not telling what they have going on. They're not, it's not like writing on the wall. You have to have those intimate conversations with everybody and you have to be able to trust them. And one of the things that, you know, God is just reminding me of, when that is something is revealed, the coach is to help them pull that thing up by the roots. We don't want to babysit it. We don't want to pat it on the back. We got to get to the root of the thing so that we can allow them to be them, their best selves, which is going to cause them to be vulnerable, especially if, for example, for me, I work with, um, you know, authors, people who want to write books. And so a lot of people who come to me are writing about their stories. And the one thing I always ask them as, cause I know that when you're writing about something that has happened to your past, usually you're writing as a portion of healing. And so you may not be all the way over it. So I ask them, okay, what do you think, what obstacles do you think may come your way as you're writing this book? Because anytime you go back and look back at a thing and you're, you know, and it, it, it still rubs you the wrong way, or it gets you in a place that can get you depressed or down, this stuff is real. So you have to get to the root of the thing to find out what's the, the root cause to help that person really come out of, um, of that thing. And it's, it's God is saying, it's, it's kind of like therapy, sort of, in a sense, um, therapeutic in a sense. But, you know, that's what we do as coach. That's what we do as people in general. Uh, we can, we meet people on a daily basis, whether we're at work or in the store. And, you know, at a conference or any event, we meet all, meet all different types of people. And for whatever reason, they may gravitate to you, right? They may come to you or talk to you or want to get to know you because that light is showing on them. And when they talk to you and they open up to you, you have to be, you know, mindful and ready to how to kind of encourage them and, and steer them in the right direction. Because for whatever reason, God sent them to you. And sometimes we get like, oh, well, I don't understand why they coming over to me yeah you it's because you have something inside of you that they need and so don't run away from the people nurture them and and encourage them wherever they are on this journey um i i'm excited I'm, I'm excited about this conversation y'all because even though there's some things that we hit on the last session god is still doing some doing a new thing and even in this and i know y'all sense it and y'all um feel it um, so let's, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper into, um, the topic of mentorship. Um, 
what what are some I, i'm going to toss this question to you two what are some um things a person will want to um look for if they are looking or in need of how do you know you need a mentor like what what are some things you know that may come up i'm tossing this to you guys um for a person who who may be thinking they need a mentor or been thinking about it or not even sure what can what what are some of the things the people can um are are sensing or looking for um in in a mentor i think for me if it was me myself looking for one it would be things like am i stagnant am i stuck or maybe i have goals that i have not even touched yet so i maybe i have a business or I have a goal, but I have no idea how to do it or even writing a book. I have no idea where to get started. And most of the time people just need that cheerleader. They just need that push. They need somebody. They forget that we live in the world of technology and it's as easy as Googling. How do I do this? But it makes a difference when you have a body there, somebody who's like really rooting you on and on, especially on those difficult days when, you know, you just feel like, I can't do this. And they're like, girl, you can do this, you know? And then they walk you through the steps. And sometimes it's just those little things of, okay, today take 15 minutes and do this, you know, do something for yourself today. You know, you've got to work towards the go, but you also, like you said before, you got to nurture yourself. So Mm -hmm. if you're pouring everything into everything and everybody else, and at the end of the day, you're drained, you got to do one thing a day for yourself. Me, mine is coffee or a long, hot bubble bath. I mean, it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, as women, we wear so many hats, but we forget that. So I think for me, those would be the main things. Is there areas in my life that I want to grow or I want to change in? I mean, let's just be real. We're talking about, you know, mentorship here. It could be anything. Um, It could be I cuss and I want to stop cussing. I mean, let's just be real. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's a thing. You know what I'm saying? So birds of a feather flock together. So if you and all your friends cuss like sailors, guess what? You're not going to be able to quit. Or, you know, but if you get around other like-minded people and, you know, hey, I'm going to be honest, when I first started out, I had to make up my own words to keep from cussing. You know what I'm saying? So it's a process, but I just use that because it's real, because I feel like if you use something that people can relate to, then they can look within themselves and say, hey, okay, maybe I need a coach (laughs) or maybe I need a mentor. But, you know, that to me, those are the things that I would look for. Good. Well, there's nothing else for me to say. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's it right there. That is that is absolutely it. That is absolutely it. Everything. And going back to that, um, the piece when I previously stated that um it's a struggle to be in when you are not in a place of embracing uncertainty. And when you're in that place of, of uncertainty, and um, as Tanya mentioned, where it, you know it results in you being stagnant and just completely shutting down. That you you need a mentor. You need a mentor. You need a coach. Whatever you want to term it, call it. Um, you need someone to um, be there for you via Zoom, phone, uh, in person, however you prefer, um, just to be that person that can talk through these things with and to cheer you on and to remind you that accountability piece to remind you um, that you can do it and to remember your why um, wh- wh- what are we working toward and and why are we working toward that and so um, yeah I, I don't think I have much more to say Tanya <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> I mean that's good y'all like um, you said something to help so for someone to help you remember their why and having a goal and, and keeping that goal, that end goal in mind, like those are things that your mentor um, will be working with you on and reminding you, hey, you know, we said December, time is a ticking. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Um, that person, um, and, and to be honest, man, you, that mentor may be on your neck 
like on your back about some things, but it's so needed to get you um, where you need to be. Real, real story, um, real story. I have um, recently got in touch with a nutritionist and she was helping uh, me to get some weight, lose some weight. I wanted to make some, um, um, healthier lifestyle changes. And she was, you know, meeting with me and giving me plans and all kinds of things. Um, and it was great information, but if I didn't put the work in to do it, it's just great information. And so, yeah, (laughs) we have to there again, once the coach gives us the things that we need, we got to take it and we got to run with it. And we got to be real with ourselves and know when we make the mistake and it's like, ouch, I didn't do that right. Oh, oh, you know, it's okay for them to step on your toes. Some of us need somebody to step on our toes a little bit and be like, Hey, look, like you said, you was going to do this. Why? Like get to the reason, like get me together. Like we need that. Um, and have to be honest with ourselves. A lot of times we try to, uh, you know, flowery, put a little white, what do you call white lies? You know, we got to be honest with ourselves and be like, yeah, I, no, I ain't do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, it was it was a hit or miss for me. I, I ate out too much this week. I should have, you know, like being for real, um, we have to do that. And so it's just us really like looking at that mentor as that uh, accountability piece and really being honest with them and taking the hard hits and know, okay, we didn't do good this week. Just suck it up. You didn't do it. You know, be real with yourself. If you can't be transparent and honest with yourself, how can you be transparent and honest in that coach mentor relationship? It's not going to work. And so, yeah, I just, I'm I'm just, just excited about everything God is, you know, doing and opening up and, and just, reshifting our mindset really about what that relationship looks like and really getting that relationship with us together too because we have to realize like hey um we have to if we won't change it has to start with us and we have to put in the work we cannot do we we're living in a society that's so microwavable and they want it very easy and they don't want to work really hard and you know, me being coming into entrepreneurship, I'm like, oh, Jesus, this is another beast. It is a whole nother beast, a whole nother beast. And, you know, it, it, I prayed about it and I know this is where God has led me to do, but it's a whole, you got to, you have to be mentally, (laughs) Joy, Joy, you (laughs) mentally ready for this. Like the fight is up the ante. (laughs) Look, it ain't like a nine to five. If you don't work, you don't get paid at the end of the week or every two weeks. Like, come on, you know, yes. I mean, it, it, I think the same thing goes with mentorship. We can lie to ourselves all day and say, well, I don't feel like doing anything today. It's come payday, it's going to show up. Come so on now. Like mentorship, you can lie to us all day, but eventually we're going to be able to see the truth because, Ooh. you know, I don't know about you guys, but I give homework. Mm. So, Mm-hmm. Hey, every time we meet or you don't show up, we'll already know you didn't do your homework. That's so, good. And, and like we say, we can provide you the tools, but they don't work unless you do. Otherwise, we're just another Starbucks coffee that you're throwing however much an hour away to uh-huh. and you're not using it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I appreciate the donation, but <laughs> the way I coach. I'm not going to just string you along to take your money. If I see you're not serious or this is not working, maybe I'm not the best fit for you. And that's why I say every coach needs a coach and you need to have coaches in different arenas because I'm not afraid to say, "Um, I don't know about that. I've never experienced that. I don't like to coach from Google. I like to coach from real experiences and things that I can really tell you about so I'm okay with saying you know I don't I don't really know how to do that but I can see I know somebody does and then I can call Joey and say hey I've got this client da 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 or call you so I think again that's another honesty piece that we have to have not only with ourselves but with our mentor that's good I can I say one thing 
just going back a little bit, um, when we talk about being honest with ourselves or the expectation that our mentees should be honest with themselves, even before they become a mentee, um, they have to be honest with themselves and realize that I can't handle it by myself. That That's where we need to start. I can't handle it by myself because a lot of times I feel like a, a lot of us, the majority of us, um, trick ourselves and, and tell ourselves lies and trick ourselves into believing that, oh, I got it. No, you don't. You don't at all. <laughs> you, you, do, you do not. Um, you do not. And it, there's nothing wrong. There's absolutely nothing wrong with saying, I don't have it. I don't know. I don't have a clue. It is okay because that's the first step to growth. That's the first step to growth is to acknowledge that, hey, I don't have it together. I don't have a clue of what I'm doing. I don't have a clue where I'm going. And that coach, that mentor is there to provide that extra layer of fluff, not not fake fluff, but just that 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 soft cushion to help you to 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 glide you to where you need to be as long as you are pairing that with real work, real work. Um, another thing that I want to say is, you know, um, cognitive in, in social work, we always talk about cognitive distortions and the things that we we trick ourselves into believing and the lies that we tell ourselves and how we, you know, just all of that. Um, it's so hard. Any any person who's seeking support, particularly therapy in some way, um, will tell you. And, and even if you're not just who you are as a person, it is difficult a lot of times to um, reframe those negative thoughts. It is difficult to say, oh, I'm not going to think that way anymore. It's difficult. That's, that's why the word habit exists. Because, because we've been doing it so long, whether knowingly or unknowingly, we've been doing it for so long that it has now become a part of who we are or what we do on a day-to-day -day -day basis. And um, we have to truly be honest and realize that as difficult as it is to stop whatever negative thought that is, whether it's I can't do it, whether it's um, personally, you don't think you're a good person or whatever it is, whatever it is, or I'm going to be just like my mom or just like my dad or what, whatever it is, as difficult, whatever that, whatever that sensitive area of your life is, think about that and think about how difficult it is to reframe those thoughts and stop yourself in your tracks and get to a more positive place. That lets you know that it's just as difficult when we talk about mentorship um, and, and your role as a mentee. It's just as difficult to stop tricking yourself into believing I got it because you don't. You don't, boo. You don't. <laughs> you, you, you don't. You don't. And it's and again, I cannot stress enough. It is OK. And it's the first step to, to being true to yourself, to being honest, to be be even in the put to get yourself in a position to establish a healthy relationship a healthy mentorship with a person who's qualified with a person who has experience with a person who is a godsend right who is the perfect person for you who is the the right assignment um that you're connected to it you have to start there you have to start there yeah that's good that's good that's so good I think it's difficult for some people you know, some people, I find in women today, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm seeing a lot of women that's having a hard time connecting with other women. I'm not really sure if they've never really had um, friendships, relate. you know what I'm saying, and had true friends in their lives. So they always have a, this wall. And, you know, even on some of my consultations, they'll say, look, I don't have any friends. And, you know, is that a choice or is that... Is that something, because it's a pattern, is there something, you know, let's analyze why you don't have any friends, you know, um, is it, is the breakup or whatever always because something they did, or is it because maybe you're petty Betty and, you know, you get ticked off at the, you know, smallest thing, or, you know, what is it? You know, do you hold everybody else to the same standard that maybe the last couple of friends did? And maybe that's why you can't let anybody in. Am I the only one that's experiencing this with women? I find it really hard to connect with women um, and, and kind of like let them let you in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's um, 
because it's a lot of backstabbing that's maybe happened or what what's really going on and even not even from like a mentor mentee um relationship but i'm seeing it across the board in businesses and collaborations like we won't even collaborate with other women for whatever the hangup is but what we have to understand is their power in numbers mm -hmm. and it's just like today you know joey your people become my people my people become your people you know sharissa's people i mean it's we could do so much more yeah. if we would just come together and collaborate and if we would just take the time to really grow up and put on our big girl panties and sit down we yeah. have a lot more in common than what we think than what we see on the exterior mm -hmm. so i think that's also a, a big issue that i'm seeing yeah i think it's because they we you know as as females that comparison thing is so big like we're looking at the next and we are um trying to make ourselves have what they have if we don't have this then you know you know that comparison spirit is running rampant or you know it could be you know something from the childhood maybe they have mama or daddy issues or something like that that makes that you know they've been hurt and didn't don't know how to forgive or they're holding on to something that may make you know women just kind of fearful of different relationships. I mean, whatever the case may be, it's just so many things um, out there. It goes back to what we said earlier about just making sure that we can be vulnerable and trust. If we can't be vulnerable with each other and we can't trust each other, the, the, the partnership, the friendship, the mentorship is not going to be successful if we can't really open up and be honest about what really is going on. And, um, yeah, now I'm just like, you know, we need therapy and mentorship, right? <laughs> we really do because we, you know, there's a lot of trauma, I think that goes into what, um, or is a key factor regarding what Tanya mentioned, like trauma, whatever, as, as I'm sure as I said, whether it's mommy issues or, um, I used to have a best friend and I don't have a best friend anymore because she did X, Y, and Z, you know? Um, but, but those things, we don't think about it as trauma, but they, but it is a traumatizing experience for them. And it's, it's something that they are unable to break loose from independently. They need that, that therapist to help guide them out of that dark place. Um, and until they, they address that part, um, which many of us don't, we just jump to coaching and mentorship when there is a whole nother layer to that, um, that needs to be addressed. Um, but until we get someone who is qualified and a perfect fit for us in that area of our lives that we're struggling with, we are going to miss the mark regarding mentorship. We're going to totally miss that boat, totally miss that boat. Um, because again, we're struggling or, or pushing back, pushing against what is meant to um, propel us. Mm -hmm. It's meant to propel us, but we don't see it that way because we're still dealing with that, that trauma and, and needing a therapist to help us address that layer, um, which prevents us from being able to walk into other areas of our lives effectively. Yeah. Or not even having that, you know, seeking out the therapist. We, we talk about it. It's been so prevalent lately, but how many of us really do go and get one? <laughs> I posted many... the other day that said it's okay to have Jesus and a therapist. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because listen I know how it is to have all that stuff bottled in and bottled up and honey it is no joke it is no joke you'll be sick and all kinds of things because you have all of that stuff all of that poison on the inside of you you gotta let it go you gotta let it out you gotta release it 
somehow, some way you got to get it out. I thank God for the way that he had me to release mine because had I not, I don't think I'd be the woman that I am today. And I'm still growing and he still got some other things that he's doing in the inside of me. But Lord, I know what it feels like to have all that hurt and that pain and that disappointment all bottled in and you not talking to anybody about it. Oh my goodness. It is it's no joke. <laughs> it's no joke. So if you are listening and you need a therapist, go and get, I know some, I can inbox me. I know um, some therapists that will be glad to assist you and help you get to that next level, because that's what it's all about. We're all on a journey to our next, to our new, to what else is happening. And we have to let go of some old things. One of the best things, um, and I want to say this probably happened maybe, uh, maybe a year ago. I don't know. But um, I was reaching out to one of my mentors and we were talking and I just told her I couldn't stop crying. Like I couldn't stop crying. And she was like, you're grieving the old you. And I had to actually look that like get more information, like grieving the old me. What does that mean? You know, what is that? So I'm grieving that shyness, that that person who was in the back and God is pushing me out towards the front. So that old person, that old person, those old things and those old ways, they were certainly just shedding off. But I had to go through that and I had to call. I was like, what is, I don't know. It just came out of nowhere and it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was, I was booing. I called, I said, listen, I don't know what's going on, but uh, I need you to pray because right now, but yeah, like we, we have to grieve and get that stuff out of us however we got to scream got to kick we got to go to therapy two three times a week I don't care whatever you need to do we need to do that so that we can show up and be our best selves and be who God has called us to be man I'm so excited listen those of you who are on clubhouse those of you who are on Facebook live if you have questions that you want to ask us or anything like that I'm getting the comments I'm checking the chat I'm looking at the Facebook live um and clubhouse I see y'all um I'm just gonna shout out a few things that I hear and then we'll keep this conversation um going Dominique says we need help help us get to the root of that thing yes Lord God um Pastor Michelle says insecurity and jealousy I'm sure she was talking about that that situation Tanya that you were talking about oh my goodness we see it all the time it's so prevalent um Yes, I'm looking at the comments in, okay, um, Clubhouse. But yes, man, this conversation is so, so good. So I want to switch gears. I want to switch gears. We're like at 720. And we said that we want to try to do at least an hour. And I don't, don't want to keep you ladies as um, long. But you know, we can go on and talk forever. It's just like natural. Like we just get on here and it's no rhyme or reason, no program, no nothing. It's just conversation <laughs> you know um okay come on uh Letitia is putting the connects in there thank you so much um Letitia is putting um those therapists who um I were thinking of the ones I were thinking of in the chat so if you are listening to this now or watching this replay man y'all get connected to some of these um uh, women and men of God man who can help you get through um some things I'm telling you um but yeah let's 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 keep going so we're we're uh, getting ready to close at the end um of this conversation and it has been when I say amazing so far, I want you to um, leave our um, our viewers, our viewers, our listeners with um, some words of encouragement about your men uh, a mentor and a mentee. Some words of encouragement about a mentor or a mentee. Um, I'll give you a few moments because I know I'm throwing some stuff at you. I know I'm throwing some stuff at you. Um, but leave them with a few ahas or something that they need to just pencil or think about when it comes to that mentor or mentee. Well, for me, I would say in order to heal, you have to feel. And that's for the mentee. 
Um, like we've been saying this whole conversation, if you can't be real to yourself and you're not willing to really dig your heels in deep and find out what that root cause is, sometimes you just have to rip the Band-Aid off. You know, that scab is never going to heal if it's covered and it can't breathe and get any air. So, um, you know, in order to heal, you have to feel, you have to go through those emotions and you'll be surprised how strong you are. And, you know, when you overcome that, that the new person, like you were talking about, that you're going to be, um, I, I know speaking from myself, once you overcome those old, that old self, you're not even the same person. <laughs> I look back, I was so shy eight years ago, you would have never caught me on here, baby. I would have been like, oh no, can I turn my camera? If I can turn my camera off, I'll do it. But you know, now I'm speaking, I'm doing all these things. And it's just like, who, who was she? Like you said. And I guess from a mentor standpoint, I would leave with you. Remember someone's always watching you, even on your bad day. They may not be your client yet, you know, but somebody is always watching. So always put your best foot forward. Watch what you even post, you know, because women, let's just be real. We act out of emotions a lot of times. And so, you know, somebody might have ticked us off or something might have, you know, somebody might have left their tennis shoes in the floor and it just made us mad. So we'll go on there and we'll, you know, post something. Somebody else will see it as something totally different than you know what we're really mad about yeah so just pay attention that somebody's always watching that's good um so what I tell my clients all the time is that um and, and anybody that I come in contact with I just want them to remember and know that um they were born to live not just exist and with that um, that's 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 my tagline. That's what I, I love to pour into people and remind people that you were born to live, not just exist. And so many times we walk around day in and day out just existing. And we are existing because we are not tapping into who we need to be, who we're who we were created to become, who who we are intended to be. Um, and doing and we are not doing what, what we were created, what we were born to do. And um, you know, we again that goes back to what I mentioned earlier about tricking ourselves into believing these things about um we're bigger than we are and this, that, and the other, but you you really have to know that in your heart, spirit, and mind and walk in that daily, knowing that every step you take should be intentional. Mm -hmm. It should be strategic and it should be intentional. And if you don't know what steps to take, that's what mentorship is all about, is connecting with that person to help you to help guide you along the, along that path and to discover the path because you may not even know what the path is right. but to discover that path um so that is what I, I want to leave um anyone with whether you're a mentor whether you're a mentee is just that you were born to live not just exist and every single day um is a day for you to take steps intentionally and strategically good that's good so good you two and I I think I could just add on to that and just say you know keep walking to every day you get up every day you wake up every day you get a step keep going we fall sometimes we fall short we don't get it right um but every day that we have breath we have to keep continue to put one foot in front of the other um hold be be, be real about where you are and who you you know where you are and what where where you're going and what you need to do be real and honest with yourself be real with yourself first recognize that there's something that you need to do to change and then once you realize the things that you need to do to change get with those God sent people who can help you get in those places, get in those, um, get in position for that change, get in those community, those small groups that mentor, uh, Tanya said it earlier, have mentor for a, diff a variety of things, get with like-minded people who can push you to your next who can push you, who can see you and develop the gift that's in the inside of you. Make sure you check your connections, but also check you first. 
make sure that you're showing up and being the real vulnerable you man i i listen i just don't even want this to end like this has been amazing oh my gosh oh my gosh this has been amazing listen um if you have questions 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 y'all want to ask please drop those now i'm going to turn it over to the ladies so that they can share how that um how you may get connected to them and um what coaching services they may have um, have to offer you all so I'm going to turn it over either one of you guys can you know I don't never pick either one of y'all go first it doesn't matter to me but let them um, drop your emails your numbers websites and all the um, amazing things um, that you have going and how um, they may if they want to utilize your services how they can get in touch with you They're trying to decide who's yeah. going first, y'all. <laughs> I guess that's Tanya telling me to go first. Um, so again, I am Joey Gresham. It has been a pleasure. Um, I hope that um, between the three of us that you have heard something um, that has in positively impacted your life. Um, I am the owner of Joey Iman, and I serve as a life coach and therapist for women and moms. Um, I am trained and soon to be certified in perinatal mood disorders, including anxiety. And um, yeah, I just want my whole mission and purpose in life is to um, empower women and moms and to um, help them revive the woman with Within. that's that's what we do we revive the woman within um because as tanya mentioned i believe she mentioned during the the um uh time that we've had here that you know we often just pour and give and give and give to everybody and everything and we neglect ourselves and um yeah and and moms in particular moms in particular we are good for it we get we give our children we give our families even if you don't have children you give your families you give to you know you may work with children <laughs> you you just give give pouring and we end up pouring from an empty empty cup and again tricking ourselves into believing that we are th thriving and we're not <laughs> we're struggling we are struggling and so that is what um I'm here for that's the purpose that I serve is to um help you walk through that journey um to get you um to embrace your new identity as a mother to embrace the new identity that you are um where you are as a woman um and to help you revive the woman within you can reach me via email at revive, R-E-V-I-V-E -E, at Joey Munn, J-O-I-I-M-A-N dot com. Um, I can be reached via phone 205-378-9679. And you can view my website um, at joeyimunn.com. That's J-O-I-I-M-A-N dot com. Awesome. I am Tanya Williams and I am a transformational life coach. You may be saying, what the heck is that? Well, I help women discover their purpose and walk in it. I also help you become the best version of yourself. So whatever areas that you're struggling with, that you want to just to be better than you were yesterday, set those goals, help you, you know, launch your business and get started. I help you in all those things, whatever makes up the best version of you. I also am an author and I have created a small group from my book called The Best Version of Me. And I will start leading that back up in August and it's six weeks long. And each week we break down a chapter in the book. It comes with a workbook. I have also created a leader guide. So um, for some of you who might be looking to eventually help out and lead that, if that's something you're interested in, I would love that. You do have to go through the small group first. Um, in addition to that, um, I am a speaker and I do have my own mentoring um, group that I have, which is um, Covered Girls. So that is an extension of the small group. Once you go through the small group, uh, many of you know that, you know, the small group's awesome and you have accountability, but when it's over, it's over and you're like, now what? And, you know, this is just an extension of that. Well, the small group is free, but the extension is not. You do have to pay for that. But um, I have two different programs where if you didn't heal in certain areas through the small group, then I kind of we discuss those things as a group and we walk through those, you know, for another six months 
if needed and work on those things. And it may just be everyday issues. Um, for those of you who got what you came for and you stepped up to the plate and you know you overcame and you healed in all those areas, then I also offer an extension for, like I said, uh, women who wanna start up their own business. And um, that's also a six month program. I do all this via uh, Zoom. So you can be anywhere to attend. We do it one night a week. So if you guys are interested in any of that, you can catch me um, on Facebook. I'm under Tanya Williams, or you can email me at TanyaWilliams01 at gmail, and it's T-O-N-Y-A. Or you can go to my website at www.TanyaWilliamsLifeCoach.com. And you can just contact us. There's a little tab that just says contact us, or you can go on there. I have um, the small group on there and other coaching services. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. And I'm going to share. Um, I am, um, again, Sharissa T, visionary of HR Ministries, and I teach, I coach LLC where I am a midwife. Um, I help you birth the vision, um, the business or the book, whatever um, God has laid on your heart to do through um, coaching. I have a six week uh, mentorship program called PUSH um, to birth your business, your vision, your book and your service, a product or services. Um, that six week comes with group coaching and one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, I have videos, homework assignments, journal prompts, affirmations, all kinds of stuff on my online academy called the Creatives Academy. Um, you can know more about um, that by going to my website at www.sharisat.org or you can email me at info at sharisataylor.org. Ladies, I am yet again, I'm honored to be able to get on this live stream with you guys and um, just us coming together like we always do, <laughs> like we always do, and just have a meaningful conversation and just talking and just letting God just do whatever he wants to do and letting him have his way. I thank you ladies so much, so much for um, you all and, and just being a vessel and um, I know we talked the last time we talked, I told you guys that I was getting ready to put some things in place and to be ready that I will be calling on you. And I'm, I'm, I'm just one shy step away. Once I solidify that date, I'm calling you. Okay. But be you, ready. It's you need a push or an accountability partner. I need to drive my butt to the place to go pay my deposit. <laughs> That's what I need to do. <laughs> and I'm going to do it. Um, so sometimes be on the lookout. Um, God has um, definitely done it again. And so we are hosting our first conference since um, COVID-19. And you you know, we talked about it. And I already told y'all who I, y'all got to be there. So just once I get the date solidified, I'll be texting y'all. Hey, look. Now, what look. do we tell our clients the first thing? Like, when do you, what's the first thing you said to me when coaching my book? Now, when do you want this done by? You want to do your this deadline? deadline? When the deadline is? Uh-huh. <laughs> Monday. Right, what you preach. Okay. Monday, Tanya. <laughs> I'm going to text you on Monday. And you my, got it. Nope, mm -mm, Monday's a holiday. It's Juneteenth. They're supposed to be open, though. He told me they'll be open. Okay, it's my well, birthday. I'm, I'm gonna send you a text. Yes, ma do that because I told him I'll be there first thing in the morning. I did, I did. All I gotta do is get the date down, and I promise you, once I get that date, we in there. But um, so ladies, y'all, ladies, queens, kings, whoever is watching, because I can't see, I'm not, I can't see who's on Clubhouse. My phone has gone black, but I think we're still running. And I can't see who's on Zoom because I'm looking at Zoom on Facebook Live um, because I'm looking at Zoom. I'm sorry. So listen, y'all, we are um, so excited. Again, Tanya and Joy, thank y'all so much 
for yet again accepting the assignment and just know that there is more to come. So just be on the lookout. And for those of you who are, um, y'all see, this is live stuff. Now Tanya says she <clears throat> gonna be my coach. She gonna make sure. See, this is what I'm talking, that's what, that's the kind of folks you need in your life. Like, hey, sis, you said, I'm gonna text you Monday because you told me, come on now, come on with it. Um, I thank God for you ladies, man. I thank God for you guys who um, are rocking it out with us to the end. We said we were gonna do this within an hour and I stuck to, well, a little bit to the time. Um, I don't wanna hold you guys too, too much longer. I know you guys are busy moms and y'all have you know whole families and stuff like that. Me, I just got my dog, you know? I just gotta go to the dog, you know? <laughs> I ain't got to worry about kids. <laughs> it's a catch 22 in that thing, though. It's really, it really. Whatever is. you desire is coming. I, okay. That's, I'm about a to whole, that's a whole nother thing. Don't even get me started. See, yeah. I'm about to get off of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's yours. Yeah. I touch and agree in Jesus' name. Listen at this. Y'all see this. I cannot with them, too. They cutting up, y'all. They <laughs> But seriously, I know you guys have other things that you need to do. So I, again, thank y'all so much. Listen, till next time, we will be back. Don't, ooh, let me, thank you, Holy Spirit. We will be back, not next Monday, but the 27th, June 27th. We are coming back. Um, we have started. So this live was the start of our summer series. Um, each year, God have us do different things. I think last time we were doing Bible study. This year, we're doing summer series. So we have two um, um, Facebook Live or live stream events in June and July. And our next event, we will have Minister Doella and Dr. Joy, the nutritional plug, who are going to come on and talk about health and wellness. Listen, y'all mark your calendars. It's going to be June 27th. Um, it'll be via Zoom, Clubhouse, and Facebook Live. 6 30 cst time and we're going to um, dive into the conversation about health and wellness listen this is a ministry that talks about the whole person we don't just focus on spirituality we want you to get well in your physical body we want you to get whole in your mind with mental health and in your finances we want to help you become homeowners we want to help you become better in other areas, just not spiritually. So, <clears throat> excuse me, stay connected and join us next, next, not next Monday. I'm about to say that. The, what's that? The fourth Monday, June 27th. I think that's the fourth, the last Monday. Come on, help me somebody. <laughs> the last Monday for that um, health and wellness chat. Listen, this has been a blessing. Ladies, I love you. I'll be talking to you very, very soon. Tanya, I already know. I already know you. I know what you're going to do. <laughs> I'm going to be on it. You hear me? I love y'all. God loves you more to next time. We love you and we will see you later. <laughs> Bye y'all. <laughs>